Hello Gatsby Plant Science Summer School alumni. Welcome to this follow-on practical session wherein I will be microscopically examining some plants on your behalf. Now my name is Marty Jobson and I am a science communicator but I trained as a plant cell biologist at the John Innes Institute in Norwich and there I spent much of my time peering down microscopes. So it's lovely to be able to return to my first scientific love of plant science. Now, today I'm going to be showing you Taraxacum officinalis, which is this plant here. This is, of course, that was a bit wet there, but this is, of course, the common um, dandelion, which gets its name, by the way, from the leaf, which is supposed, this one's gone a bit limp, but it's supposed to look like lion's teeth because the name Don de Lyon literally means in French dan, uh, lion's teeth. So this is where we get dandelion from. But anyway, what we've done is um, we've taken, or at least when I say we, I mean Steve, who is all the way down in Cambridge and I'm up in Yorkshire, um, and we have taken this, one of these plants, sliced it open like that. That one's there, it's been sliced open. And let me show you on a slightly close-up camera here. I'll do that, I'll get rid of this, and then I'll go to here. Here it has been sliced open, there you can see, uh, and we've pulled out a number of the individual florets. Here's one floret, okay, uh, that make up all of this, because this plant does not have a sort of a, a classical plant shape with you know, with, with the sepals, the petals, um, uh, the anthers, and then the female part, the pistil, with uh, the ovary at the bottom, and then the stigma and, uh, at the top and the style in between. It doesn't have that. It has lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of florets, little individual flowers. You can sort of see them here. But really what we need to do is we need to get one of these underneath a microscope and we're using a scanning electron microscope. So let's jump straight to that. Now, I should say thanks have to go to uh, the lovely people at Zeiss. Uh, that's, that's Zeiss over in, no, it's, yes, it's in that direction. Uh, Zeiss, who, um, for who own this microscope and they have got this set up for us down in uh, near Cambridge and uh, it's their kit that we're using. So what we have here is we have a view of the, um, the stage. So this is where the specimen is sat. And if I use my little pointer, so here is the stage, okay? So this bit is the stage. And the stage is actually tilted away from us. That gives you a better view. This here is where the electron beam is coming down. So this is an electron microscope. It's not using any light. It uses electrons in a, a thin beam, a focused beam, which are then scanned across the specimen. Okay, you get some reflected electrons. Well, sort of reflected. It's complicated. Okay, but you get electrons coming off the specimen, which are then picked up. And actually, you can't quite see the detector. There's several detectors. There's one detector over here. If I get rid of the Zeiss logo, you can see it. It's over here. And there's another detector over here hidden behind this, uh, this piece of uh, this glass light pipe here. Um, and those are picking up the electrons and they're what give us the image. And if I go to the actual image itself, which I can do by going like this, and then I go ooh, one more to this here, like that. This is now the image you see of the tiny little floret. And what you're seeing there, it's a slightly complicated image, so I'll have to talk you through it. What we've got there, is um, first of all a uh, scale bar at the bottom okay one millimeter that bar is one millimeter the next thing you need to know is here is the magnification 22 times 22 times there's focus and there's quality now i can mess around with these controls because i am in control of this microscope even though it's in cambridge if i speed up the uh the quality by clicking uh here like this um it scans faster but you get a lower quality. I can slow it down and it scans slower, but you get a better quality. And it's about sort of finding the balance. And then when you take a picture, you slow it right down and you get the, you slow it down really well so that you get the most resolution. And I can zoom into it as well. But first, let me tell you what you're seeing. So what you've got here is, here is the ovary. Okay, so that's uh, where the ova that will become the seeds are. And then coming up from the ovary, okay, is a shaft, 
Um, it's called the style, and at the end of the style, you will find the stigma, which is where the, uh, the which is the female receptive parts, which is where the pollen has to land to fertilize. And when the pollen lands, it grows a pollen tube, which goes all the way down the style to the ovary. In this case, what has happened is the anthers, so they're the bits that produce the pollen, the male parts, form a sheath around the style. And that is what this thing is here. Okay, It is a, a continuous loop of material, a sheath around the, uh, the female style that's projecting upwards. And if I sort of move across a little bit by doing this, like that, you can see, I've moved across, that's it. What we've now got, here is the female style, and this is the sheath that we have opened up. And you can see, if I zoom in here, that the sheath is full of pollen. Let's zoom in on the pollen. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Oops, I need to be in this section. And then I go click and I zoom in. And it just zooms in immediately. And this is the beauty of the electron microscope. You can just keep zooming in and keep zooming in and keep zooming in. I'll explain in another video exactly how that works. But basically, I can zoom in. And so long as it's within some realms, you get essentially depth of field all the way from the top to the bottom of your specimen. And what you're seeing now are pollen grains. These things here are individual pollen grains. And in this particular species, they are quite wonderful. They're beautiful structures because they're these wonderful knobbly little lumps. Some uh, plants produce very boring pollen. Uh, grass produces very boring, just round, sort of whoop, oval shaped, egg shaped pollen. And that's because the wind catches it and it blows it away. It doesn't need to be any other shape. These guys, these guys are being transferred from one plant to the next by bees and hoverflies and things like that. And butterflies as well, um, in particular. And that's why they're all wrinkly crinkly on the surface, because they catch on all the hairs on the bees' legs and on the on the hoverflies body and stuff like that and then they get moved from one place to the next so that's a deliberate adaptation to help them transfer from one plant to the next um, you can see uh, here's a good one I'm going to zoom in on this one here um, and again so you can see the scale bar at the bottom so this thing if I zoom in again you can now see the scale bar is 20 micrometers so 20 thousandths of a metre and you can see my pollen grain. Now this specimen has been coated in chromium. You can coat in all sorts of things, um, all sorts of metals, but generally speaking you coat your specimens in chromium and what you do is you scatter basically ions of chromium all over the surface of the specimen, build up a conductive layer because of course we're shooting electrons at this specimen and electrons have a charge. And gradually that charge will build up. And if we don't dissipate that charge, it will cause weird things to happen. And the specimen actually starts to move as the charge builds up on it and distort. But you can see some fine detail in here. You can see all these tiny little hooks on here. OK, uh, which allow it to get caught on the bee. And that central sort of hole there. Right that through that the pollen grain will grow and it will grow it will grow all the way down the style and fertilize the ovum in the ovary the ova so let's zoom back out again because i want to show you the tip of i'm going to go all the way back out and we'll see look we've lost it slightly there oh that's because i picked up the mag <laughs> I'm getting a bit carried away with my magnification. Uh, let's click here and double click there. And we should be able to scooch across. That's it, because I want to show you this structure here. Because this structure, right at the tip of the pistil, okay, you have the style, and at the tip of the style is the stigma. The botany has so many special words, but then this is this is true of anything in biology. We've got all these kind of funky 
kind of special terms, and botany has all of it. What you need to know is this is the female part of the flower, and you can see that the the whole thing is all covered in these sort of wonderful scaly bits, um, and again that helps the pollen stick to it because what happens is this um, this female stigma, this pistil, grows up through those wrapped around um, male parts which got all the pollen in and they get coated in pollen okay so the female part on the outside is coated in pollen the anthers don't present the pollen to the bees it's the female part that does it and then right at the tip eventually what happens is in the morning when this thing opens up they only last a couple of days in the morning right at the tip it's closed shut because this bit here at the tip this is the receptive female bit, which is where the pollen needs to end up to fertilise the plant. But in the morning, it's shut up tight. That little sort of snake mouth is shut tight, so no pollen gets to it. So the bees go around the plants, they pick up pollen, but they don't fertilise anything. By the afternoon, those have opened up, but by now the bee has gone to a different plant. And hopefully will be carrying pollen from one plant to the next. You get cross fertilisation. If it doesn't fertilise, what happens is that little mouth on day two will open up and will begin to uncurl itself all the way down and turn itself into two little curly whirlies. And these inner surfaces here will end up coated in pollen from this plant. It will self-fertilise. Here's a beautiful specimen of pollen here. What we're going to do is we're going to end on this one. Let's zoom in on this. It's rather pretty. And um, look at that. Isn't that a fantastic image? Um, let's zoom out ever so slightly and just centre there like that. And then we can see that. Because, um, uh, okay, so thanks to Zeiss once more for allowing us to use their kit. If you want to find out more uh, about me, go to my YouTube channel. There's I've been streaming... Uh, microscopy uh, to, to the web all through lockdown and there's a whole load of uh, stuff there including an entire playlist of just botanical um, specimens if you want to find out more about me you can get in touch with me on twitter and with that i think that's all i want to say uh, other than to say thank you very much for watching uh, you've been a lovely audience and this has been part of the gatsby plant science summer school so thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.